Hi folks, today I'm going to be doing a field stripping and reassembly video on the Husqvarna Model 1940 Lottie style pistol. Uh, after that I'm going to be talking a little bit about the interesting history of this particular gun. And you can stick around for that if you want to. But let's get right off into the field stripping. Pull back a little bit on the slide, just like that. Take down lever down. Slide comes off. Pull the bolt out. Pull the locking block out. And that's it. Pretty simple. The recoil spring is retained. It doesn't come off. You don't want to take it off. Don't mess with it. These are kind of cool because they have a basically a bolt accelerator on them so that as it begins to recoil this is hit on the frame and then levers around up in here to where it actually starts kicking the bolt back under force kind of interesting i don't know of any other handguns that do that but Sort of neat that they thought that was necessary. Putting it back together, locking block has an arrow telling you which way is which. Arrow goes towards the muzzle, drops in simply, bolt goes in, and then on reassembly into the frame, you have to make sure that the Locking block has dropped down. It can't be in the up position like this. It needs to be down. Line it up. Line the recoil spring up. On they go. Pull back again. Flip the lever up. It's a fairly stiff lever. It takes a little bit of force. It's a nine millimeter pistol. Has an eight round detachable box magazine. Kind of Luger style in the way it loads where you have the button that you can pull down. Kind of cool. This particular handgun is kind of interesting because as far as pistols go, this is a very multinational pistol. Uh, it was designed in Finland by Major General Lati. It was licensed to Sweden where it was made by Husqvarna and this particular one as we can see by these marks here was actually made under contract for the Danish government in exile during World War II. They were concerned of having weapons whenever they got their country back after the war. And so while the war was still going on, they were purchasing these pistols from the Swedes. So you have Finland, Sweden, and Denmark all, all kind of associated with, with this handgun. They're really a great shooter. Uh, you're not probably wanting to shoot them too much, particularly the Swedish ones, uh, because due to the wartime nature of the production, the, the steel is known to not be of exceptionally good quality. The actual work done is good, but the materials are not very good. And they can be prone to, to cracking and damage. But the trigger is fantastic on it. I mean, it's really a kind of interesting because it has a long reach from the trigger to the back of the back strap here. So if you've got fairly average sized hands and you have a, a really comfortable reach, you're just ending up with that the perfect pad of your finger on it without crunching your finger back in any kind of funny way. The sights for the time period are all right. I mean, they're not, they're not huge. But they're pretty good. 
I mean, by modern standards, they're not great, but you know, as far as pistols from the 1940s go, pretty good. Safety, safe in the back, fires forward. It's not a particularly, I don't know, I don't, I don't really like the position of the safety very much. It kind of results in this area being, it's just rough. I mean, you, you don't have a very smooth area here. It's not that bad, but not totally comfortable. And that's all there is to the Swedish model 1940.